First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Did they want to add one line in the The only thing I was going to uh, suggest is that, is that we have a, uh, an executive session to talk about the, the water and sewer discussion prior to the, the, uh, the item on here. I mean, I, I don't know how much more we can really talk about public session until we have a chance to re talk about it together because, you know, there's a chance for litigation. So, so do you want to put that before or after the, the discussion? Yeah, so I would put it um, after the water and sewer budget, but before the discussion. So, we'll do a, and what is it? An executive session to talk about the water and sewer discussion just prior to the, the item. Um, it's for Hill. Yeah, we're trying to figure out what we're going to call it. I'm not real certain that you're going to need to be in the executive session for that because you're not discussing, you know, anything that's that's. I mean, you're talking about either evading somebody or not. That can all be in public session. I don't know if there's really a mess. There has to be some information in Gusson and put the board at a disadvantage if it was public too soon. Right. That's all. So if it's not, we're not going to do that. I mean, it doesn't, you're either making a decision or you're not, right? Well, we can, I guess. I mean, I mean if you want to go into executive session, I just don't know what we would call it. Do you have any idea what? Sure. I mean, it could it's, be, it's legal, I guess it's, it's legal. It's a legal matter. Yeah. If you're, hmm. I just think prior to us prior to us talking about the financial end of things that we should have clarification of, of the numbers and how that affects the town legally. Yeah. In this case, prior to yeah. Executive session um, due to legal, possible legal. Yeah. All right. Does that anybody have anything else to add, modify, or no? Do um, we accept the agenda as amended? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have anybody in regards to the Chapel Bible camp? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. So we will move on. Move on to our, um, our first agenda item. Just to uh, follow up on our discussion we had last time. Oh, I'm sorry. So is there anybody here that has anything? Um, it's not on the agenda this evening? Yes. Okay. I can't say something other than this. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Betty Ann Scammell, for those of you who don't know me, maybe it does. I'm here regarding the Sheridan Cemetery. And I'm specifically speaking about the upper lots in the Sheridan Cemetery. I have been here before, before previous wars. There was one culvert that was moved and has now been placed so that it will run into the ditch alongside that cemetery. I have just been up there now, and the water is running down the ditch. Now the roadside is higher, so there's quite a distance between the water and the road. There is not much difference between the lower side and it going into the cemetery. The ditch was dug three years ago to divert water from over, over the cemetery and creating more damage than has been done because of the water that area. But that ditch does not go past the cemetery area so that it immediately stops and rolls over part of the grave sites. There are three other culverts that run along the bottom of Kirk White's land and the road, and they are diligently right now stealing water onto grave sites. And there are three of them. They were there before, and they're still there. It was loud, I don't know why, but the dish 
discharging water through those culverts is degrading those cemetery roots. The scam lot is in great problems. The lot beside the scam lot, the tall headstone, has now fallen over due to the degradation of the soil beneath it. You can clearly see where that water is just eroding the soil underneath the grassroots and eventually caskets and urns are going to start to show. I would like for the town of Bethel to think about doing something that would permanently take care of this water issue so that we don't food, but that we don't have these sorts of things. I don't know. We used to, years ago, they had a ditch. Ditch fills in, doesn't get cleaned out, yada, yada, yada. They put in a culvert. Culvert gets plugged up, culvert gets old, culvert rots away. Now we keep doing this. I have been here speaking to select boards on and off for 15 years. They put that in Frank Cemetery in 55 years ago when they put in Christian Hill from going straight up between the Taylor House and the cemetery. And they were supposed to do upgrades to that area at that time to make it acceptable. They sold the lots. People are now <coughs> interned there. And I really do believe that it's the town's responsibility to see to this water issue. And I respectfully thank you for listening to me this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll go over and take a look. Um, is it, do you think, it, does it run water all year long or is it just rainwater, you think? Oh, it's all your, um, all your, uh, all your water that comes off will come down from White, as David knows, down through Tooksbury's and down the side of the road. But the, th the three culverts that are still left are right across Kurt's Drive or Road on the bottom, and they are right on to, one is going on to the Blues, one is going on to the cemetery lot before the Blues, there's one going on to the cemetery lot before that, and the culvert that was moved, which was the largest one, was spewing directly onto the White Cemetery. That has now been moved, so it's kind of kitty corner and going into the ditch. But if they're nearly overflowing with this amount of water, so you know any time we're having the rain that we're having lately, and et cetera, we're, you can just see where that water is nothing but a river. Yeah, and you can't access the cemetery any longer because the ditch is so high and wide that there's no accessing if you want to get to a cemetery lot. Okay. And there's no place to, to park there either unless you utilize Kirk's Road. But then you still can't get to the cemetery lots unless you're there. Okay, I'll take a look and see if we can get it. Thank you. Was it? Yep. Okay. Well, we'll take a look. Take a look and see if there's a way to fix it. You want to, uh, let's check and see what the next uh, meeting is. Do you want to just follow back up with us, Greg, on, uh, was it the 10th? 10th of June? Okay. Meeting. And I'll try, uh, you know, maybe each board member. Yeah, spare moment to go up here and get a ground and see. Yeah, I had a conversation with Cecil there a while back, and he mentioned that they were. <coughs> they were concerned you on the local town manager's time, and he should take care of it. Okay, I'll take a look. Well, we'll each take a look, um, take a look as well, uh, maybe an hour or something, and see what some possible remedies are up there. Uh, it's hard for people <coughs> to get, get across to them that section of the cemetery. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't even see how they get a vehicle in there to. Is this further up there, Hill? Towards the end of the cemetery? Which which end of the cemetery? It's up the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, I'll see what I can do. Thanks. I think, Mo, when you and I came on, is when they were doing some upgrades. Right, and they were supposed to fix that at that time. Right, they were supposed to alleviate the issue. They were supposed to dump more water into that ditch. Instead of, they, instead of putting it directly on the, on the grave site area, they just can't go into it. And it was the larger culvert that was going on to the white property yeah. or the right the white cemetery lot. They moved that at an angle to put it into the dish, but they never addressed the other three culverts out through to the end that go across the entire length of the cemetery, which are also spewing water onto the other grave sites. It almost sounds like that the, the, uh, the volume of water is too much for the culvert 
culverts, of course, no matter what size the culverts are. Well, so what I'll, I'll look at, it, there may be a way we can divert water uphill, upstream, and alleviate some of the line going down the hill. Because if you've got, you know, water, volume of water and, and grade, you can pick up a lost and that's a problem. So if we can do something to, to change that. I was thinking possibly, and it was just my thought process, is that before that road was put in and there were no culverts, though there was just the natural flow of water, if you had a berm or whatever behind, up above that road and let it go off towards the noble property where the gully is, the gully's made for the water versus trying to put it all to the roadside. Those three other smaller culverts just put it off to um, the noble side where that big gully goes up the side of the cemetery anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. We'll take a look at it and we'll, um, we'll put it back on as an action item for the next meeting on the 10th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment or inquiry? Anything that's not on the agenda this evening? Are we anticipating that the Bible camp will be here during the next? As far as we know, we've had it. I don't know if Kelly ever got. We tried to contact them. I don't know. If, I'm not sure if they ever got back with her still. Uh, as far as we know, they're supposed to be here, but we haven't gotten a notification of that. Uh, and Bill Hall will be coming to see them. Bill Hall will be here. Steve is already here. So we may have to just give her a bit. Well, why don't we? Um, why don't we just move ahead to our? action item uh, for water and sewer budget and um, and we'll see if Bill comes in for 6 30 if not we can move Steve up. Bill will be here. It's the Bible for people that I will be sure about. Okay. So the last time we left the water and sewer budget uh, we're talking about potential Proposed increases, and we had some questions in regards to the budget versus projected uh, versus what we, you know the actual that we had here. So, did everybody get the added information? So, just uh, I don't have the paper. What was the um, what was the recommended proposed increases for each one again? It's like three and a half. Do you have that? Point 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 no, um, I believe water was 1.92. 1 1.92 for water and the sewer was 3.47. 3.47? Yep. So, this is what you asked for. Um, Tim and I just worked on the projections and Tim updated the spreadsheet. So. Um, you can see there's a change in the numbers, so um, obviously the year's not over. And um, but as far as the water, you know, in this projection, it was looking at like eleven eleven thousand two hundred sixty nine dollars is what we were looking at as the possible surplus. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Right. But you know, I did look at some numbers after um, Tim and I discussed this morning and. <clears throat> You know, there's, I came up with one, two, three, I had six. You know, we had a tax sale plus some other, you know, I was able to get some pretty major collections. So, you know, 22, over $22,000 here in this, in the water, in the water rental revenue is some old collection. So that's one of the reasons we have unanticipated revenue that we were doing well, which is, you know, exactly what you know, to do. But, so we do have some unanticipated revenues there. And <coughs> Tim is, you know, prepared to certainly elaborate on all the projects that they're doing. And I do have a, I did get the updated draft of the audit and I just eyeballed it in the last, you know, few minutes just on the water sewer. And, you know, again, I think it's important that you, you know, that you understand that the, as we said, along the water sewer systems are, you know, more than, you know, they're half depreciated and you have no money set aside. So you need, you know, an enterprise funds, water and sewer are enterprise funds. You can make as much money as you can make. That's great. So the fact that you're, you know, right now running a tentative, you know, surplus is a great thing because you need to have um, a, you know,
know, it'd be nice if you have an undesignated fund balance. And we also put in here in water, the water fund still owes the general fund over $70,000. So, you know, that's at a snapshot of time, but, you know, the general fund wants that money, wants our money back. You know what I mean? So there's another thing is to, to let you know that, um, you know, we don't propose increases lightly. And as I said before, I still think it's important that you think about, you know, with the water so maybe a possibility of a small increase every year just to stay, you know, ahead of the curve. But, um, and certainly as far as ongoing projects, that's, uh, you know, Tim can certainly speak to that in water and of course sewer. And sewer, the same thing, you have $15,000 surplus right now. And again, it was another $20,000 in unanticipated revenue and sewer owes the general fund, you know, 188,000. So, those are things that you should keep in mind. And, and obviously, once again, we did not propose an increase in the sewer rates last year because we knew the water rates were gonna take such a hit. We could have, but we chose not to, you know, to be fiscally <coughs> not conservative, so. Because um, I know those were some of your questions last time. Yes. And then you want to know about pending, you know, work, and that certainly tends. So, a couple of the questions <laughs> I had on the revenue end of things. <laughs> um, the projected revenues that you have here for both departments is that yeah. is that with a hundred percent collection? No, what I do, I'm putting out the bills tomorrow. So what I did was I looked at um, you know the past few four quarters and kind of came up with an average as to how much we collected, and then just put that average of um, those quarters in here to give me a projected number based on the current year. Do we have any idea of ballpark what we think it is on the water or sewer? Is it no, it's included in here. I don't have the breakdown with me. Sorry. No, I just, that's how I did the calculation. I don't think I left it with them here, but, and the bills will go out tomorrow, so. And that gives us a month to, um, but that's how I came up with the number in projected collection. But the reason that it looks so good is that, it's, you know, it's because we, you know, picked up some back. Especially in sewer, you know, we, you know, because there's less people in the sewer. Three people that I got back collections from made up twenty thousand dollars in sewer of unanticipated revenue over the twenty five hundred that we budgeted, and then it took six people to come up with just a, just over that amount in water. So, mm -hmm. um, what do you, do you have? What our current? Do you know what our current water and sewer? Rates are? Late, late, sir. Late, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a good one. Oh, I thought I gave you the... Oh, did I miss that? I was going to say. So the tax. Yeah, that's already. Yeah, that's all the taxes. That's all the taxes. That's all the taxes. 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 Kelly gave me a copy of the taxes. Oh, here we go. There's taxes. Oh. I only said it's just taxes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's just taxes. Oh, it's just taxes. Maybe you can. Oh, I'm going to do the billing tomorrow. So, no, I don't know, Chris. I don't know. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, been running a deficit, it, it made sense. And you don't want to increase the water rates too much. So a 1.92% increase with a $5,000 payback this year. But if things continue to run, sure, in the future you could put that up to something else, a higher amount. We're just happy that they're making a payment. No, I, I guess the way I was just looking at it was, you know, you said there was what three accounts that made up twenty two thousand dollars in that sewer. Six, six. Oh, or six. Uh, three for sewer, six right. for water. Yeah. And, and being that sewer is in the hole to the general fund, one hundred eighty eight thousand. You know, mm -hmm. could we be putting more money towards that faster to pay the tax people back? We could. Because again, yeah. this is an enterprise fund, so right. it should be, you know, it shouldn't owe the general fund any money. Right, and you could do that, and you could also wait until the end of the fiscal year and see what it is, and then you could make that determination at that point. So yes, we could do that. Um, right. And like I said, you know, a do to do from is a snapshot of time. You could have just processed the payroll, you could have, you know, anything like that. So that's just a snapshot. That's what it was at that time. So other than what's in, other than what's in here, Tim, is there any any other yeah there is a, issues that have reared its head well, <laughs> since then? Or? Well, they haven't. I don't know. I think everything rears its head on a rotating basis mm -hmm. to a point. But what I have is a laundry list of items that need to be done for us to stay compliant with our permit to operate for the state. And some of the items, if we don't address them, are going to end up being on the bond vote when we rebuild the water system. So part of our goal has been to address these as we can financially pay for them and pull them out of the budget, which then keeps it off of the bond and makes that end note cheaper. The other thing is, is the state of the month is part of why they're high-fiving us right now and treating us well, because we're receptive to their needs and demands. Uh, there was previous demands that were agreed to by the town that were not committed in 2016. They didn't follow through. And we were pretty much at the end of the good graces of the state. And some of the things that we're doing now are bringing us back around. We have two drinking sampling stations coming. They're $2,000 a piece. I got to install them from the mains out to a piece of property. And Greg knows we've been working on it together. Uh, that's just a piece of that 11 that's left. By the time we get to the end, it, it's going to be very small. The other thing that's going on is we're trying to rebuild the roads to the reservoirs. You're going to have to do up work up at the boulevard one. We installed two new culverts on it last week. We installed two new fire hydrants last week. Um, I've got to get the grader up there and ditch it, and then we're going to have to stone line it and do something to make it so that it's going to stay because we're going to end up doing a pile of work up there. There's just That's just a couple of items that are going by right now. And the sooner we do some of those things, then we can work on the reservoir. We can get equipment up there to do the work and they all start. We can, we can keep moving forward ahead of what the state demands are. Anybody from the board have any more questions in regards to the water? So sewer? these are the, the new rates. This from the last yep, yeah, those are proposed. That's the way to be. We spent a lot of time working yeah. on it, too. We didn't just shoot from the hip. We really put a I lot just of wonder time. if we can, at some point, like you say, get to a consistent, I don't know, 2%, pick a number, 2%, 3%, right. whatever. It, it can, 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 it when do we get to do that? I mean, Once we get the budget time. stabilized, yeah. where it's a you know consistent growth, we can we can make it work that way. Right now, they're just basically trying to we're putting out fires, put out fires, and, and throw the money where the money needs to be thrown, and, mm. and move on from well, there. Think, yeah, it's always fires. It's always well, going to be fires. That's yeah, right. but there is a problem. But we're also trying to do it the right way once. Yeah, we're 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 not trying to put a band aid on it and wipe our forehead. Yeah. And the other good is it's not going to be, you know, because we're making strides with collections, there's not always going to be this back pot of money to collect either. So, um, you know, we were able to get to make some serious headway just because people owed you so much money. You know, eventually, obviously that's not going to be the case. So, and then we're making good strides to get there too. 
We're trying to take advantage of it while it's going by. Yeah. Well, it's already by the way. Um, another thing I do want to warn you, I did do some calculations on when you give them abatements and amendments to the people's what they owe us for the water and sewer. Um, and some of these feel good moments actually cost us dramatically in our budget. So I want to caution you to how many that you try to, to yeah, that's something that out. Chris Jarvis had talked about too before. That's certainly something he said in both taxes and yeah. water sewer that it is hard because when you make those, we're counting on, we base this on X amount of use, and when those change, then then obviously that becomes there's money that we had anticipated that we don't. But um, well, it's much much easier to to follow this budget projected budget sure. this time around. You know, okay. last time it was. You know, gaping holes and well, just trying to deal with well, figure yeah. you know where now I can actually see where Absolutely. the information and it was there, there for you, Chris. We yeah. just didn't provide it to yeah. you. Yeah, I had just used what we currently had at that time. I hadn't do that, and we did try to include some notes and things like that, more notes, and, and then, like I said, just do the projection. So, um, of course, again, like you were saying, you know, now that we have some of the back revenues coming towards us for mm -hmm. collections. Yeah. You know, we're able to get stuff done. However, you know, if, if individuals in the town paid on time, a lot of these maintenance costs would be even less. You know, if you're doing maintenance more often, it costs you less money than doing maintenance, putting fires out. You know, right. so and and just like, you know, I don't know what the number is, but you know, we're heading in the right direction, but we still have a lot of uncollected utilities. Yeah, yeah not that. that and we're doing shut shutoffs in June. Right. So we have sent the finding of the notices, and then the next step would be just like get another and then we'll tag it for. So we do have a couple that um, are that will be shut off in June. So we do have a couple of those, too. and um, always working to obviously to make deals with people to get those payments paid off. The tax sale certainly helps because that gave you um, some big ones, you know that because they were going to go up to tax sale, and then they got taken care of right before, and then one obviously they got maintained, you know, taken care of at tax sale, um, you know, brought, you know, one account, one brought in over $20,000 or so. Okay. All right. Any further discussion from the board on either one of these categories? Um, and typically, we want to have these set. Well, it's, it's helpful to have it set for the first week of June, right? Yeah, and if you already well. set it now, and then obviously it takes effect July 1st. But what's nice is we're doing a billing tomorrow. I'm mailing the bills out tomorrow. So if you set the rates tonight, then I'm going to put a notice and that's going to go in that bill tomorrow along with the link to this CCR. Um, so then that way people will know in this billing cycle, which is what we did last year. When this is this bill, and then when you see your next bill, this is what the increase will be. So it was nice to be able to add that um, in. Okay. I mean, I think after looking at everything with the updated information, you know, the the increase has seemed uh, reasonable. Um, the you know at this time, I would I would entertain a motion that we take the proposed. Um, Sewer and water rates for for the next uh, year, starting July, uh, the sewer at 3.47 percent increase, and the water at 1.92 percent increase. So move. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next step. Anybody from the Bible camps still? None. I heard our half hour bell chime, so it must be 6 30. <laughs> 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 I'm a dot. <laughs> <laughs> we knew you were coming, Bill, so we just rang the bell for you. Uh, so uh, we were, you know, we were talking here at the last couple of board meetings on. Um, certain rep representation that we have in the town, and you know, getting getting the 
representation in every once in a while to just kind of what's going on or what do you need from us or what should we be prepared you know to go up against so uh, so Greg had reached out to you about coming out tonight yeah yeah, um, yeah so basically I, I think that's good because it is nice to, to touch base every once in a while you know, as board members change, you may, you know, you may or may not be aware of, you know, what my role is. So I'm Bethel's representative to the uh, Two Rivers Transportation and Advisory Committee. So um, this is a group of, of, of all of the members of the Two Rivers Commission. Um, they get together and we're mostly concentrating on uh, transportation issues, not, you know, you have other members, I don't know who your representative is to the commission, but they do deal with planning and other things, but we're just concentrating more on the transportation issues, what's going on for road projects and things like that. And so basically we get together um, six times a year, every, every other month, and uh, what we do is we usually will have uh, a, uh, a representative either from uh, AOT or one of the other uh, organizations that are out there that are dealing with transportation with some of the more current issues, whether it's, you know, what uh, current grant programs may be out there or uh, what other things may be uh, going on. So we'll always have one new issue coming up. Uh, on, a, on an ongoing basis, um, uh, every, you know, every, on an annual basis, we will review um, the state's list of prioritizations of various uh, transportation projects whether it's bridges, uh, culverts, or um, you know, uh, leveling programs, or just paving programs, and we get to input, we get to reprioritize them. If we don't think something's in the right place, we get to move it around. And so, you know, that's one of the things we do on an ongoing basis. In addition to the ongoing projects, which you know you're aware of now, we've got the you know the bridge up in uh, Gilead and the mess down, <laughs> down here that are paid in there. In addition to those, there are a number of projects that are in the the the, the uh, waiting to be done list. Um, they'll go they'll move up when some of the other projects move along. And uh, we have two in this area that I think are of concern to us and they're basically the uh, the Peabine uh, Bridge and uh, the Gaysville Bridge. Uh, and they are number two and three now okay. on the next prioritization list. Um, they got moved up last time because it's like, you know, these are, it's such those 107 again, it's like, what are you going to do? This is the only way to get there. So they did agree to, to move them up. So the next time some of the other projects move along, they'll move up into the planning. Um, stages, so they'll, they'll be Any idea on those, Bill, when when the state's thinking about putting those projects out to bid? Or right. to well, what happens when, when you move up into the thing, it's usually it's like a five-year process where they do the design and all that kind of stuff. My guess is based on the priority, they'll probably move up in the next year or two. Okay. Um, so it should be coming along. Um, is there anything at the town level that we should be preparing ourselves for? Are these are these 100% funded these, state jobs? These or? are going to be uh, state bridge projects, so I would assume it may be like a 5% or a 7% so match or something like that. Like that. that. But most of it, it will mostly be a, you know, a state project. Okay. Not a job. Um, so, uh, and the other, you know, the other thing is, you know, the reason that I got in touch with you is like there are, are all kinds of other uh, projects that are going on. Um, there's this municipal bridge maintenance and management seminar that's coming up. Um, they had, a, you know, four or one a couple of years ago, which I, I'm sure people went to. Um, so we always get these regular presentations, and I don't know whether you get this information passed on to you or not. If not, I, I, will, I will. Yeah, do that. if you could, I, I'm not getting nearly what. Yeah. It, used to be, it, used, it used to be that, you know, the manager got all of the stuff that I used to get, but I'll make sure that I forward okay. Thank you. this stuff to you so that you can stay. Because we get, um, you know, upfront information on any of the new grant programs that are coming out, um, and we have to do a reply for them. Uh, Rita is really good about helping put together the, you know, the grant applications. 
Um, so I'll pass all of that stuff on to you. So I know we've taken advantage of a lot of the stuff from them before. We've got all of our inventories all done right. um, through them and things like that. And that's essential for you know getting the grant money uh, going forward is to have them all the inventories there. Are there any uh, municipal grant or road grants currently that maybe we're not taking advantage of that maybe we need to look harder at, do you know, Bill? Or, or, or are we doing a good job of getting everything that's out there? Well, we've got a granting aid that we do every year. We've got an equipment grant this year, new this year, that we're going to apply for, for small equipment. Um, other than that, I don't know what else really they've got. Maybe you could build it. Most of the, the, the ones that I think that are probably uh, most uh, appropriate for here are some of the structures grants, you know, um, because they're doing a lot of, you know, bridge and culvert um, things uh, around. And those are the ones, I mean, those, you know, they cost a lot of money. Yeah. You know, um, the more of those that you can uh, you know, apply for, I think. So just, I think those are the ones that continue to, you know, keep looking at. But I will reach out to Rita and see what things are out there. Uh, yeah, we've used the structures grants in the past. Um, yeah. and we've, I think we applied for one last year and didn't get it. Yeah, the big one up on um, Lily's old book road that, uh, where you did the, the big uh, the the culvert. Yeah. yeah. And I know there are going to be a bunch of them coming up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So how would so it... I guess the only thing other than I would suggest is that um, the, what, uh, what prompted this was um, there are some of these, uh, you know, bridge uh, maintenance things coming up, and she was basically suggesting if there are particular items um, that the town has that um, are of interest to them to let her know and she can try to include them um, in, in this presentation and see whether there's something that we can add on to the, to the list. So. so other than the two structures that were mentioned, are there any other ones, Greg, that you can think of that we can just start prioritizing in town? Yeah, we've got a list. Um, that big culvert on, on, uh, on Peavine uh, that had barrels next to it for a while. Two years. Yeah. Uh, that's one we actually applied for last year but did not get, so we're going to reapply for that one this year. That's going to require some hydraulic engineering and, and probably a larger squash pipe type of structure of some kind, possibly a box board or something, I don't know. So that's the one that we had, uh, that was our next on the list, our top priority for that program. And then the, the Grain and E um, is that project that we took, we did four corners last year. Remember last summer we did that work, the rock mining and all that? That's the Grain and E project. And we've got another one of those um, for this year that we're working on, putting the application for. And then uh, the equipment grant is another we're definitely going to try to take advantage of. It's a small equipment grant. And we're talking about getting a, uh, to basically a, a bucket mounted blower that allows to blow the debris and stuff out of the ditches. So leaves and twigs and whatever else. <coughs> It's something that is, I think it's a 10% a code, 10% match, I believe, um, on that equipment. So, something else we'll be looking at taking advantage of. Just as an observation for different uh, means of financing equipment purchases, one of the things you might want to consider if it happens to be appropriate. Um, the State of Vermont Treasurer's Office has a municipal equipment loan fund, very low interest rates. Equipment. But if you happen to be able to finance a piece of equipment with an adjoining town, if you can share something, 0% interest. So if there happens, I know sometimes it's hard to share equipment because if you need it, you need it. But if you can share something, it's no interest. Right. If it was something like so yeah, you can share with the world, sure, we can share with the like a mowing yeah. attachment or something that you can yeah, really yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That's just something to keep in mind. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll take a look at that. Yeah. Now, is there is the grant process through Two River Gazette? Are all the grants like in the same time of year? Like they all got to be done by. April or are they throughout the year the deadlines on them? Uh, the deadlines are pretty much are they're all set they're all because it's all different different agencies yeah. have their yeah. different yeah. deadlines. And, and, and I just didn't know I was just thinking that, you know maybe if they were all like the same time of year we could have you come in like a month or two prior to that kind of 
this is what we should be thinking of, or, you know, well, type deal. One of the pieces that I got in the, the breakfast meeting that I went to was a list of all the grants mm -hmm. for the entire year and when they do, when they have to be processed. Okay. That was part of the information that I got. So, mm -hmm. I think I, I don't know if I passed that along to you or not. I remember seeing that. There was a chart that had each one broken down by topic, and what, what it had to be applied to, or whether or not it was matching, or whether it was oh, okay. a full grant, or whatever. Can you bring that copy? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. So how would you like to do it, Bill? Like, what works better for you? You know, you guys meet six times a year. We meet six times a year. Um, I think, you know, what I would be looking for is any um, any things that you would like me to bring to uh, the to the committee um, mm -hmm. for projects that you might be interested in. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, what we do is, you know, we get to see all the, you know, the when they want to propose changes and regulations, we get to see them up front and we get to comment on them and you know make our observations and things like that. So we things up, we see things up at the very very beginning. Um, but if there are any things that you would like me to bring before the before the committee to, to address whether there are specific projects um, that you would like to have added on to this, uh, you know, bridges or culverts or things of that nature, you know, let me know and, and we'll see what we can do. Um, as I said, we were very successful in having the, uh, the P line and the um, Gaysville bridge, bridges moved up on the, on the list um, because of their connectivity. Um, and so, we'll just, the only thing you can do is just try. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. when, when's your next meeting, Bill? Um, we're meeting in um, July 11th, July 11th. Would it be helpful, Greg, with us on putting something in maybe the, um, the town manager's report and the things where we could cycle through that? You know, maybe a, a meeting before his meeting. Um, you know, so like once a month we would. Once a month when you when you go through your town manager report, have a little piece in there just two rivers only that maybe you can talk about some projects that maybe we need to start thinking of, um, and then we can kick it around at a board level and then get the, get that information to Bill to kind of represent us or. Vice versa, Bill could get done in a meeting and send me some information on, hey, heads up on whatever, and then we can share that. You know, just thinking of kind of that flow of information back to the work that I think you find, I think you find the, the discussions that we have to be very interesting. I mean, we have discussions about, like, um, you know, say they're not payment management, how they're managing the payment when they do the, you know, the roads now, and how it's different from what it was, and how it sustains better, you know, things of that nature, which I think I find to be very interesting um, conversations to have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just trying to figure out yeah, what's the best conduit to get the information, you know, from Bill's meetings to our meetings and, and through you so that we can. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we, always get, uh, we always get a packet at the end of the uh, of meeting. What I'll do is I'll basically send all the information that I get uh, off the grid so we can distribute it to you. And we also usually have, a, a, you know, minutes that you come afterward, which will help give you some of the observations that people have. We have a really talented group of people that. I mean, so maybe we could have Bill come in, like, I don't know, twice a year or something like sure. that, and update us kind of. We'll also get it to you, like Bill said, you can get it to me, and we'll just decide right. through the, the packets. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we could have Bill come back again, like, right around budget season, and. <coughs> Let us know what's going on in September, October ish. Just have Kelly give me a call. Okay. Does anybody from the board have any questions in regards to the two rivers transportation? No, that breakfast meeting is very important. A lot of uh, folks that were there that didn't realize the scope of what TRORC did. So it's very important. Thank you, Bill, for coming in. All right. Chris, yeah. Could you just hear people? There's a sign in sheet. So if you haven't signed in, could you please sign in? Well, Bill, I know you, but <laughs> there's some people I'm not quite sure of this sign up here. Uh, <laughs>
Separate agreement. Right. Part of 
Yeah, it's, it's separate, and this is the first draft of this, and we'll, we'll get to that. But this was, has, I think the courts have already seen this as well, the judge. <laughs> I've seen this document. Uh, I don't know. We never ran it. You have it? Okay, so maybe it was just the first one. Okay. okay. So I know when we first talked about, well, the property, you know, the, the biggest thing when we were considering all the funding sources coming together was, was what the, um, uh, what the value of the land was going to be assessed at. And do, has that been yeah. done and it, did it come into, I don't remember. Maybe I missed that on it, but I don't remember hearing back on it. We, yeah, you know, we, we had a number that we were hoping it was going to land in, and if it went below that, then we were going to have to raise more money. You know, obviously, if you hit that, it went above yeah. it, we'd be fine. So it, that's the next discussion. Yeah, we've got to kind of throw things together. Yeah, we're talking about. Yeah, we're talking about that. Okay. Yeah, this original, this, the, the first piece of this thing, this is the original draft. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Ok
over $40,000 for another state grant program, which is the River Corridor Protection Program. And that's separate from the VHCB grant. That would be added to, you know, if we got both, that would get us within uh, $10,000 or $11,000 of the final purchase price. And as I understand from, from Mary and Conservation Commission and other folks, there's been a very robust kind of local fundraising effort that's gone on that has bringing us close to that yes. figure. So if, indeed, if the VHCB money can be secured, the Ecosystem Restoration Program grant has been awarded with the town money, then we're, we're pretty, pretty much at the projected budget. So I'd like to um, go ahead with the work that we've been doing all along, continue to kind of get this money from VHCB and add it to the others. The worst case scenario, I guess, is that we don't get that money from VHCB and we have to figure out some other ways to fund that gap, that $30,000, $37,000 gap. Um, we may, you know, look at, there, there might be some alternative ways to run the funding or run the purchase um, that would get us past that issue of VHCB if, if it's a little bit complicated, but um, if we had an interim owner who was willing to pay the full value, but essentially donate it back to the River Conservancy at its lower value, at the appraised value, then we would avoid that appraisal problem. That's kind of a tricky um, pathway to go. But it did it. So I guess what I'm saying is there's alternatives that we, we believe this is a really important project. A lot of other organizations do. We're looking at this August 1st deadline, though, as you know, not that far away. Um, so the third thing I wanted to say about it is the, the state um, clean water funding program has a new, it's called the WHISPER program. And Greg was like one of the meetings where they talked about this. But there's a, there's a way that we could do interim financing on this project that we, the Rural River Conservancy, could ask for a bridge loan to basically get the money together to make the purchase on August 1st, and then figure out these other funding sources pay off that bridge loan. It's you know, a little bit riskier pathway for us, but um, we will definitely put that on the list of things to do if we're having trouble finding the VACB money. So I don't know if that all makes sense. It's, it's still a complicated kind of a lot of moving pieces, but um, the, the appraisal company in order did complicate things for sure. So is there a possibility that the um, the Housing Commission would give less than the asked for amount, or is it a this this or nothing sort of? You've asked for thirty-seven thousand, and either you're going to get that amount, or they won't do anything, think, or would they drop their amount? Based I'll on find that. out more about that too. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to kind of prejudge what they may say. Right. Because I think that that could change a lot of factors. If yeah. Say, yeah. Great. We're still in, but only twenty-five thousand versus thirty-seven. Yeah. The, the issue kind of comes down to this uh, issue about creating a, a special benefit, what's called a private benefit to somebody. So if you, if you pay someone more than the appraised value from certain governmental and IRS regulations, you're actually creating a special benefit for that person that they would not have gotten any other way. Um, now, I know this is, a, this is a unique situation where the town agreed to that value because it was avoiding a lot of potential costs that the town might have incurred otherwise. Unfortunately, the appraiser doesn't recognize that in, in his appraisal. That was sort of a one-time unique situation where the town was willing to pay at that level. <clears throat> From a you know, conservation point of view, it's totally a worthwhile project at that level. And so that's what we have to do is figure out how to convince people of that. So the, the first step, if we go back to the beginning, we talked about would be to sign the per sale agreement. So I go to Bilodeau and have them commit to that, and then we can take that per sale agreement. That's a necessary part of, of all of our funds that we have signed an agreement. And um, I guess the second part would be talking about sort of the 
agreement between DRC and the town about how this is all going to roll out. And Greg described it, I, I think, very accurately. Um, the third thing <laughs> would be if the town would be willing to write a letter to me, the Department of Conservancy, that I can take to the Mount Housing Conservation Board to say that the town is in support of this project. Just so, you know, kind of that, from the board or from myself? It, it, needs, um, it needs to be from the town. Yeah. So, I don't know if you're authorized to do that. Or... Can be. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, Bob? Right. <laughs> So first things first, so that we can, so that he can complete his, his applications and, and try to secure this funding, he needs to have a, a signed agreement. Yeah. Do, do we need a motion to sign that? We actually have to sign it. Huh? We all have to sign it. Yeah, you all have to sign it. Okay. In triple. So we'll, we'll do we need a motion? Yeah, we need, I need a motion. Need a motion that we approve the purchase and sale agreement. With uh, two rivers? I'm sorry. Uh, three rivers. Vermont River. Vermont River Conservancy. Conservancy. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You guys have the copies? You know. Yeah, I mean, well, partially. Yeah. Yeah. You have to go through zoning. Yeah. yeah. 
but it would also be <coughs> fees that would also dictate some of that as well. It's similar to the fee regulations where you you're restricted yeah. one you could bring. Right. Sure. Yeah, yeah and, but we wouldn't be, I mean, we wouldn't be doing any structures of any kind, so it wouldn't be an issue. But that's something that we could kind of hash out when we, when we look at doing the, the language for the easement. But we never really, uh, there was really no thought of ever putting any massive structure or any real structure of any kind other than just to keep on the possibly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want the conservation thing that's thought of, but that's what we originally kind of talked about. Very limiting to just those. Yeah, it should be three. That's three. All signs. That's good. So I'll get um, Bill Lewis to get you on this and ours, and then you guys get the original copy back hopefully soon. I mean, you'll be able to finish all of the, or some of the funding, the applications and things, or yeah. that's kind of been waiting for that. The main, the main thing is the be to be funding. Right. And so right. now that we have this, they'll know that the town is committed. And if we can give a letter, or if I you want me to write a letter, or we can write a letter of some kind, just when you send me that in your app, just, just tell me which one's letter. Okay. Um, that's okay. <clears throat> or, I mean, should it come from the town, or should it come from the conservation committee? As representation it needs to come from the town. Yeah. From the town side. Part of the VHCD's process is they, they want to be sure that they invest money in projects in the municipality, that the municipality is supportive of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So that is, has to come from it. Guys. So we can talk about how you want, to, you want me to write it, if you want to write it. I'd rather have you all have your signature on it. It would be a lot better than just having mine on there. Right. Well, why don't we um, well, entertain a motion to allow Greg to draft, draft, draft up our, our representation of the town and we can sign it at our next board meeting. Or Is that going to be soon enough? Or we can, we can go in. We can go in. I think if, if, your, if your motion that gets in the minutes indicates that the select board is supportive of this mm -hmm. and the letter is sort of codifying that support, then that would be. Just with my signature then? Would that be enough? If, if you're authorized to do that. Okay. Yeah. As long as I just want to make sure that you're getting yeah. what you need. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just do that then. Okay. So okay. Do we need a motion? Yeah. Yeah, 10 minutes. So, um, I, I'd entertain a motion to allow Greg to write the draft um, for, for the town in regards to the easement uh, for which is property. Not the draft. The letter of support. The letter of support. Letter letter support. support. Letter okay. support. Okay. So move. Minute and a second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 If you can okay. email us. You want to see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll send it out to you. I'll send it out to you. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Okay, good. Great. And as soon as I find out about the VHCD, I'll uh, report back. And right. And in the meantime, in the background, we have had the Conservation Commission has been diligently fundraising at events and doing a good job, doing a great job. You guys are making all sorts of money, aren't you? <laughs> we actually, I think there's potentially more to be raised if yeah. necessary. Yeah. So, I mean, we're really confident, I'm confident we're going to be able to do this without taxpayer dollars. And it simplifies it. So when they're done fundraising for this, we're going to put them to work fundraising for other parts of the town. Yeah, we need a town garage. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you, you, I'm all sad with the ass you get. <laughs> Okay, thank you. 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 I'm Oscar Gardner, for those of you who haven't met me before. I think it's my turn. Yeah. All yours. You have All right. Awesome. So, um, I came, I want to get the note of the select board and thank you for allowing me to serve the town of Bethel. I wanted to clarify some responsibilities and duties that the select board would like for me to 
pursuit. Um, as you know, some constables are missing on your enforcing activity. Um, let me segue off that, and I was actually fully certified from the state of Vermont. Vermont criminal justice training council to exercise law enforcement in the state of Vermont. Vermont. Um, and to do such, I'd like to do the same thing here in Bethel, within the confines of the, obviously, of the, of the town. Um, but I, I'd like to get that directive from the select board. Um, that's one of the things on my agenda today. Um, I can I go over chapter 12 of the constables, if you wish, to go clarify that. Uh, now we get first paragraph. The role of the town constable varies from town to town. It depends upon whether he or she is elected or appointed, and whether the voters have elected to limit his or her law enforcement powers. At one end of the spectrum, the, the town constable is the town's local law enforcement officer with all the powers of search, seizure, and arrest within the town. On the other end, the constable only has the power to search civil process, assist the health officer in discharge of his or her duties, destroy unlicensed dogs, kill injured deer, remove disorderly people from town meetings, and collect taxes if no tax collector is elected. As of July 1st, 2012, all constables are now required to have training to exercise law enforcement within their towns. As I stated earlier, I have I'm basically what I'm a, I'm a level 2 e certified law enforcement officer by the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council. And what I'm asking the town select board to do is allow me to exercise my law enforcement powers granted within the scope of my training within the town confines of Bethel. Um, I'm also a police officer in the for the village and town of Kimmington, so that scope veils me statewide jurisdiction, but I'm asking to exercise my law enforcement authority within the towns of Constable, unless you guys at some other future endeavor. Uh, it, it's also in the statute so that I can, if the town lets me and other towns agree, and I, I'm summarizing and paraphrasing big time, uh, exercise those authority, that authority of the towns. I'm not asking for that. But what I am asking is to get the clarification from you honored select board members that I wish to exercise my law enforcement scope of training and authority granted to me by statute here for the town of Bethel. Can you outline a little bit what's different from what's written here for the constable versus what you're asking for? Well, I don't know what you're referring to. Well, so what you just read is what's on my screen. So, I'm so, asking to do on <laughs> so, so yeah, typically the constable, kind of their, their job description is, is really defined as just doing kind of traffic control, the, the dog stuff. Um, really that's about it. Um, we were, and it's limited by statute, statute limited by what the, what the person in that office, their certification will allow them to do. As well as the town themselves can limit what they, what the constable can do. So Oscar being a, a high level certified police officer has a, a larger scope so he can do you can go to that point of it. Um, okay. So let's just start the first part. As a, just a regular constable, it's really just traffic stops. Um, you can do a little DUI enforcement and the dog work. That's the majority of what, uh, killing deer, things like that. It's very limited. Yeah. And I'm asking, what are, what are the additional things that you would bring to oh, it? Just, I bring... Uh, anything that's... Is there anything on the list of the last page that you can't do? I do everything on the last page. All those statutes that are in All those statutes that are in okay. yeah. yeah. I, can, I can, within the confines of the town, I'm allowed to cross yeah. uh, to, for, to execute civil process, criminal process, subpoena, warrants, rights. And so, so what's on this list would be essentially yeah. what you're asking. Yeah. I'm to, asking to be allowed to do right. Okay, in, that in, helps. In, in a summarize, really, I'm asking to be able to perform my the the, the duties and you know, and give granted the authority to cross the civil criminal process within the confines of my scope of training, which means I will not do death investigations, which means, I, and, and there's a lot of this that, um, that the state police will end up doing uh, because it's outside of my scope. Um, he, he's also confined by the talent. So as, a, as an officer, you can actually, you're statewide. And tell me if I'm wrong, I don't step in. But as an officer, you're actually statewide. You're allowed to, to be an officer everywhere. As a constable, you are by statute confined to the town that you're in. So right. if he's if he's after somebody or whatever, he kind of technically has to stop at the town limits, except no. the fact that he's an officer. But 
and he's pursuit for hot pursuit for days. If I were to pursue somebody, I'd go outside. Yeah. But I can't go outside and come back in. But so he would have happened is he basically would pick up. <laughs> he would basically pick up. So if he's coming into town, he's coming down off the highway, comes into town, and he's not quite in the battle, he sees somebody doing 110. As a police officer, <laughs> not a constable, not a Bethel constable, he can stop that person. Mm -hmm. But he will be as a police well, officer, awesome. not as a the Bethel constable. So it's kind of a play. I'm, I'm a killing police officer, and not asking to work under their veil, but by statute, as a police officer, I'm allowed to have state jurisdiction. But as a constable, it limits you. It limits you. And, I, and, and the odds, and, and it would be, a, I'm not asking to do that, I'm not asking for your permission to do that, because under the veil of my statewide jurisdiction under the other title, I can do it. It's not to say that I would, but I'm not asking the town to grant me that, because you can't. I'm just, what I'm asking for is clarification that the select board members in the town realizes that I'm going to exercise all the law enforcement powers that I have within the scope of my training and ability under statute to do so within the town of Bethel. So if, worst case scenario, let's say I get there's, actually not let's say there's some drug dealing, I can investigate that, but I have to. You know, you can't, I can't do that if you can find me. So, if you're forgiven the proverbial per pun, I'm asking you to make sure that you guys are aware that I'm not, I don't have handcuffs on me to perform law enforcement duties within the town. So, so when we had this discussion with Mark last time, which was about a year and a half ago, um, we asked the same question, what is your job description? Because nobody would never really have anything. Well, statute, again, statute says it's whatever your certification allows and what the town allows you to do. So we basically told Mark, do whatever is in your in your certification. And he has a lower certification, so he was doing mostly traffic stops and things like that. Um, we've got a different a, a different circumstance here. We hired a, uh, a very well trained person, and he's now asking, you know, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to, to do everything that I'm able to do, or do you want me to can you know, do you want to confine the guy? That's that's kind of I think what you're trying to get at, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Now, we just need, you just need some sort of, of clarification or guidance as to what the town, how they want him to, to move forward. With. And nor have I seen any limitation as of yet not to do it. So right. that's why we're here, right. to, to get that clarification and get your understanding. It's like an, an understanding of operation. Because, you know, we, we, what we don't want to do is come in, in any town, and especially a town that hasn't had a real strong constable or Highly qualified, highly certified constable, and just go full bull. I don't know if that's what the town wants. Now, maybe that's what the town wants. That's why we need some that's clarification. That's what I'm kind of thinking. What the original concept of the constable was. I know that when I was brought up at the town meeting about hiring a, a constable, what was the original concept? Was it just mm, minor things compared to your, you know, the vast amount of responsibilities that you can do, is there going to be any pushback? Right. Um, his, so just in my limited experience, <clears throat> history has said, to what I've seen, history was that back, back way back, a constable was basically a untrained elected official <laughs> that did very limited things. But because it's gotten so specialized, yeah. the training is required now. You are required by law to have have officer training. And according to the, what I just read off, as of July 2012, all constables that exercise law enforcement have to have that training. Right. And I'm what I'm advising is that even I think you got copies of my transcripts. I have had advanced <laughs> training. I have had an, an advanced roadside and pair driving uh, enforcement. Uh, I've done you know animal cruelty uh, investigation classes. Uh, to, what, I, what I'm trying to say is, if I work in the town of Killington, I've got all, 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 all kinds of authority, and what I'm trying to do is give that opportunity to the town of Bethel. So if I have a complaint that comes across my desk, that so and so is committing a crime, that I can go, okay, yeah, I'll look into that. Not to the fact that I have to wonder if am I restricted from doing it. 
It's, yeah, we just need you, we need you to define what, the, what, the, what it looks like, really. I mean, uh, I don't think that we'd want to, you know, restrict his training in any way. I think what we have to be careful of is that in, in the time that I've been on the board, and we have had a couple of constables uh, during that time, and each time the common theme from the community seems to be that, you know, that we don't want to have a police department. Right. You know, we want to have a, you know, a, a kind of more of a traditional constable. However, I don't think we want to limit his, um, and my you know, if, if you're able to, you know, if, you know, the three things that usually come up is, you know, people want to see speed enforcement um, done. Uh, the community community relations piece of Correct. schools, events, different activities that, you know, bigger stuff, you know. Um, and and then obviously there's the animal enforcement piece that comes with it. Um, so, but, I'm so used to being black. But we've gotten so used to, I think our community here has gotten so used to, you know, the state stadiums are right down the road. So if we have a whatever, drug issue or something like that, that they're right. going to be there to, to do it. And but I don't think we have to necessarily limit your experience and you know, say if, if you know that something's going on in this house here that you don't take care of it, you know. Like right. People would want to see that. Um, but I don't think we want to see it, you know, out and about and you know grabbing every little person. Oh, <laughs> you no, know, no, no. type thing. I think because that I think there's a big fear in the community of having a a, a police department. You know, we've always been very careful to be told that, you know, we're not getting a police department. In this right. Time. We're going to have a constable. And, and I'm full, and again, completely crystal clear on it. I've already got, I've already started walking around and seeing people going to shops and introducing myself. I've been to the school. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm entirely wanting a late, a laid back approach, but yet know I'm available. <coughs> yeah. I want people to be able to talk to me. So I am I'm making a point. And I will continue at this point to go around to all, like I said, all the shops. Um, anybody can call me. Uh, my contact information is on the website. They can call me if they have an issue. Uh, I'm not going to take the, the responsibility away from the state police. Don't get me wrong, but I want people to be able to call me and talk to me. Right? And I want people to know if they have an issue, that, and if they have an issue that they don't feel it's being addressed by a cert, by another entity. And it's within the confines, they can come to me. And I can be, if I, like I said, if it's within the scope of my training and the authority made by statute, I'll address it. I, I just, I understand where you're coming from. I don't want to come in here with a hard approach. Um, although I have already been put on Facebook. Um, you can stop over here. That came like the first, real quick. Um, and I, I, like, one of the things I want to do, you know, very, I want to, we don't have a patch, so I was going to go to the school and have the kids design, come up with a, some sort of a design for a patch for my, for my uniform and so on and so forth. But that's the type of thing I want to do. Uh, I don't want to create a police force. I mean, it's not, that's not number one on my list. No, I just, uh, those are the things that I've heard over the years are kind of what, you know, a lot of the community members are, are looking for. And however, we have been in some cases, handicapped in the past where if we know that you know there's a lot of drug activity going on and people in the park at night mm -hmm. wasn't really too much that mark could do about that i can't other than you know get the state troopers involved where i think this would be handy that if we know that things are going on here or, or down down out of town near the bridge or something like that then and you you can look into those more and i think people in the community uh, would see that as being served rather than, you know, being departmentalized. Right. Have you been approached by the state police yet? Because I think Oscar can attest to that by towns that basically are getting free coverage by VSP. There was a push for a while from the state police that towns like Baffle, who didn't have their own police force, that they had a constable. I think that was one of the you know, things behind making constables be trained more because VSP, you oh, know, yeah. wasn't going to respond to a lot of there, there regular, is a, like there smaller things. Yeah, there was. The and trouble is they just can't respond to They can't respond to But have you been approached by the state police yet to ask you to to employ a constable, not in our tenure, but before that? Like in the last five years? No. 
I was curious because that was a push for a while, and I thought that was the impetus behind the getting the constables more trained because the state police is you no know, they you know, a lot of times they call people and say, Oh, we heard you have to report a burglary because they don't have the manpower. I well they don't because they have four or five individuals on per shift that cover yeah. That yeah. huge so area. I was curious. Well I do know that uh, speaking with the uh, the uh, the barracks from the uh, sergeant that they're kind of if they know I'm on, they're kind of uh, if there's something going on in Bethel, they're kind of relying on me to go deal with that. Uh, and that would be a, a hindrance again if if you guys say no, you can't do it. So there is there is an interest that she's she's addressed and it has been in the dialogue for a number of years in town, small towns like Bethel. They're trying to get towns to have their own, I would say, law enforcement like the constable. Uh, I mean, I guess you know, you know, those were the kind of the concerns of the community that I've heard. I mean, my personal opinion is. You know that we hired you. You know with your credentials, and you know that these, like these, you know, these, you know, speed enforcement, community relations, and animal enforcement would be your priorities. Yeah. But it, you know, if there is something else that you can do and, and stay busy doing or crack down on, um, then you know, I guess my personal opinion would be I'm good with that. Um, you know, obviously, if the state police can handle it. Let them handle it. Let them handle it. But if they say, hey, we just can't get there, then, you know, you take it and run with it, you know. Because I think there were things in the past that we just, uh, because of the lack of credentials, well, I wouldn't say lack of, but, we, you know, we hired a constable, you know. So, right. you know, there was obviously some of those things that they can't do. I mean, we could say all day long that so-and-so is selling drugs out of that house, but we wouldn't think about it, you know, right. uh, or, or whatever. So I think that. I think it's a, you know an added benefit to the town. We also only have so many hours in the week, too. Right. I mean, it's not a full oh, time. Right. It's right. I don't it. It. So, right. how do you prioritize 20 hours? Do you know, do, do seven well, on the traffic and four on this? I mean, it's hard to. You, you can't. With what I've done so far, you've got to do it all at once. You can't really. I mean, if a call comes in, I go to the call. You know, I, I've. I've written two speeding violations already, uh, okay, but you know you've got to play by ear. You have to yeah. manage your time when you're out there. I, I can sit here and tell you, uh, I'm going to. Let's say I do get into an investigation, have to type out affidavits. There's going to be some administrative time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've kind of taken a seat at the town manager's office to be my my home while I'm here. So and then. I mean, I can't tell you how I'm going to manage that until I do it. Uh, I like, you know, it's 20 hours a week. Oh, no, no, it's more of a talk, right? Oh, yeah, no, right. I'm not asking you for that. Oh, no, I'm oh fair that. enough. You've only really got so much to work with. Um, but I just want, like I said, I'm here to be. Will you be monitoring the bar or making your presence known there? If I'm requested to, sure. Okay. It also depends on the scheduling too. So we're going to have more of a defined schedule so that people will know right. when he's here. Because we, we had some problems before when people would there was no way for anybody to know when he was going to be on. So we're going to right. have, yep. his, we're have an online schedule. His schedule is going to be posted online. So you'll know. And you can, if you do have an issue with the bar and you want to drop me an email, we're, we're in the midst of creating an email and a contact me. I am more than welcome to take calls off duty. If it's something that needs to be pressed and they can't get the state police to come here, I'm more than willing to, to, to deal with it. Uh, I can, you know, 20 hours a week times four, I can, I can pull around a month and, and make that happen. Uh, we discussed that. Uh, so I am available off duty for contact. And, um, and usually, you know, the hot press. I think that's there. Sir. Did I answer your question? To answer it, it's not. I request. Yeah. yeah, it's not so much he's going to be monitoring that bar or the bar, but if, they, if somebody calls and thinks there's an issue, then that's something that you would. You but would we look. have like you know, you know, spring, summer, and fall, especially you know, probably the, the biggest nuisance that we have in town is the, the speed. Yes, and it's took a one about more time. You know, I won't necessarily say they're even out of state, but we do have you know the 55 and the 30s and the. I mean, uh, you know, so there's there's a lot. And I live, just outside town, they can whip around that corner awful fast. Mm -hmm. But uh, and then they don't make the transition coming into the school zone, and then all of a sudden they're 25. You know, they're doing 55, right. 25 type deal. And then the other thing that has been, 
nuisance in the town that I, I don't feel that has been addressed very well because we had to be so reliant on the state police is, you know, just like all the other towns in Vermont, we do have drug issues. And, 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 it's, it, and it, it flares up from time to time. Yeah. You know, it'll be very dormant for a while, and then also there's a lot of activity in one area. And well, it would be nice to maybe... In that know. respect, uh, just recently, there, uh, and it, let me back up a hair. Um, I'm also wanting to let you guys know what I'm doing. So uh, I'm entertaining the idea that maybe letting you guys know what I'm doing from time to time, like a log or something right. to that effect. Uh, granted, any less, any less any crime intel, any information I can't give you. Um, letting the town know that, yeah, your constable's doing this. Being really trying to be transparent uh, with that. And, and we actually entertain maybe putting out a blog of what I've done. Okay. Let's say I have okay. a Facebook or whatever. On Facebook. And, uh, the drug thing has already, I've already been made aware of that. Um, I'm really gung-ho in trying to get that as quick as we can. Um, but that's why I'm here. Right. So that's what's my sure I can do that. And yeah. So we will get done. Uh, in the past, we've, we've gotten daily reports, you know, you know. Um, Put your stuff, your software together and make it look a little better, did you? He just so, throws, she prints stuff off from spider data, yeah. you know, just kind of he, the updates and not like his reports, over. kind yeah. of. So we used to get, you know, if you work for three days that week, then we'd get it. Yeah, um, you know, I'll yeah. that out for you. I have yeah. it with the you, 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 you can't get those yet. Yeah, and, it, and it's, you know, it's not very detailed, it's kind of. It's very vague. But it'll say, you know, hold somebody over, yeah. you know, 65 and 25. The only thing you thought about, you'll get that, but I would we admit the drivers, the license plates and stuff. Because we'll, we'll tell you that, yeah. So we'll, we'll probably morph that into something a little bit more. Yes. We're getting, but they're okay. getting. But I'm, I'm really here to, to hear from the select board that I can do the job that I wish I could do for the town. And you got, I, 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 I guess I'm hearing that it's okay for me to do that. I mean, does anybody from the board object to using I don't know. Using Oscar to his abilities in times of the state police are not available. I guess, you know, Any kind phrase it. Well, the thing is, I mean, if, if you know that there's something going on in town that could be very long administratively, you know, if the state police can take care of it, you know, because well, I know I, one I, of my I friends is a budget. trooper. And, <laughs> right, exactly. I have a budget. I mean, I'm yeah. playing within the confines of my budget. There's only so many hours out there. Because I know, you know, my, uh, one, my trooper friend, you know, if they go out and pick somebody up on the interstate and they happen to have drugs in the car, it's an all day affair. It can't be. It's, it's an right. all day sit yeah. down and do paperwork. Because you, know. you, 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 you got you got burn copies of your dash cam, you got to write an affidavit. Mm -hmm. You got to, if you have, like the last incident, I had to get copies of the, the video from the gas station I was next to. Next to. It, it can be a sort of made, a sort of made, I can't. Yeah, administratively, yeah. Mm -hmm. time consuming, um, but that, that's why. I, and I think it's just important to be visible, um, get to know the the different community relations of the school, especially. There is one school with the kids and and any type of events that might attract some larger crowds. You don't usually have issues, but you know it's it's nice to have that presence. Um, I have one other housekeeping issue. Just for if I read in chapter 12, and maybe you can help me. Uh, it says oath and bond requirements. The constable must take an oath via uh, 24 BSA 831. And we're all set with the bond, but I haven't yet taken an oath. Uh, we'll get yeah. we'll it. It's just a form that the town clerk will download yeah. offline. Okay. All constables, you know, take What's it. Just sign it. Pam will do it. Uh, do that, deal with that tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, just talk to Pam, and she can. Um, if she has trouble, she's not asking you to download Oscar. Good. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get you squared away tomorrow. <coughs> she notarizes it. I mean, so, so I think, let me just kind of summarize. Just kind of, what, we, what, what we're trying to find out is if there is any sort of, any, any sort of priorities you might have, anything you would like to not have Oscar doing. If not, he's going to do what he does, what he's trained to do. Um, I know there was some thought, talk with Mark that traffic, of course, was the big thing, but I just, I just want to get 
it kind of spelled out so that you, so he, he kind of has an idea of what he's doing moving forward, what the priorities are, um, and, and what his, what his and authority I'll, is. Really. I'll out that in, uh, from what I've heard already, one more time, I can do whatever I can do within the scope of my training. That's what I'm hearing from the board. Does the board have any priorities they would like to see? I mean, I, I you know, speak, you know, freely, but I would just emphasis the, again on the speed enforcement, the community community involvement, community relations, yeah. and then obviously we have the animal enforcement piece of it, and then anything that the state police can't cover for you, you know, as required or as needed. I, I, I guess is the way I see it. If we get a possum in the town. It is an honored guest. Okay, fine. Uh, they eat ticks like crazy. Uh, not do not, not get rid of any possums. possums. Honored guests. No okay. possums. So, so are we All okay? All possums are about that. Okay. okay. <laughs> any, other, any other questions for us? We're good. I'm good. I think we're all good. If you don't bring up, we ain't gonna work that. That's right. <laughs> um, are we good as far as equipment? So far, um, Oscar will not be using the taser. Uh, oh yes. Yeah. You want to talk real quick? Okay. I have. I told you before I want a soft approach, but they're mainly friends. I don't feel the need that I need to carry a taser. I do. I am already certified to carry a baton. I'm not even going to carry another baton, but I am going to carry what you see here with a uh, pepper foam, which I'm certified to carry. If if I'm that's that's the look I'm looking. I'm really wanting people to approach me. I'm not looking for that paramilitary environment. Uh, as a matter of fact, the, 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 this is basically what you're going to see. I, I, go up, I do have shirts coming with this uh, badge in my name, but it's all polo, it's all khaki pants, uh, a nice soft nylon belt. So, as far as the movie goes, I, I really don't. Unless you guys want me to carry a paper, no, no. No, we didn't. No, we did push back. I mean, I think the only reason why we did that was just came with the you know, certifications. I, I think you've got pretty much the equipment you need so yeah, far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like the, the computer equipment in the oh, that cruiser. That type okay, of so I re, I'm, a, I'm a computer <coughs> geek. I rebuild computers. Uh, you don't have to worry about the uh, I provide my own laptop it's in the cruiser. I don't need any computer stuff, but I have, uh, I do need to get the internet. <laughs> Yeah. I, I've already looked into that. We've, we've discussed it. That's going to happen here. We, uh, we're also working. Uh, Oscar's going down to talk to Rochester about because we know they're going to be getting rid of some stuff. Right. So we have talked to them a little bit. Um, we're first on the list to get the speed trigger if they get rid of it. If they get rid of it, they can't use it. And I've asked them to. I, I want to be first on the list for getting the body camera. Yeah. Uh, if they don't, if they don't. So if they don't let us have the body camera, I will be purchasing the body camera. Uh, what I'm thinking is we own part of that taser. Mm -hmm. So the thought is maybe we just say them, tell them, hey, we'll swap it. Yeah. The taser, we'll take the body cams and we're done. Mm -hmm. That's not be confused with the, the model of the body camera is also called a taser. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm not buying a taser, I'm buying a taser body camera. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a good model, it's a good brand. A lot of people have used them in the past. So as far as equipment goes, I'm pretty well equipped. Yeah. Um, There's an opportunity, like I said, we'll try to see if we can train off because uh, we don't. We both talked and there's really no need in this town for a taser. There was, there's too much pushback, and I just I don't think people will laugh about it. So mm -hmm. um, how, much equipment, not using it. how much equipment have we actually got? That we own a third of through the three. Towns? You know, it's really hard to tell because everything is so different. Every town had a different agreement. The computer was actually purchased by Rochester. Mm -hmm. We didn't pay anything for it, so it's not ours. Uh, although we could probably try to buy it from them. But I don't know. There were a lot of little handshakes and things that went down back then. I don't, I don't know. But I do know the taser will be paid a third. Right. I guess one question I have, and Paul will appreciate this question, is trainings. So yearly trainings. Uh, do you have a list of the trainings that you need? Um, Actually, I do. To keep your certifications, and how, how would that be uh, looked at with like the town? What what portion of the town would the town be covering for that versus, say, Currently, or somebody else? Or at this moment, nothing. Because uh, I'm doing a lot of my training. I'm going to try to do a lot of my training through killing things. 
because there, there are there are PD. So okay. there are there is the annual um, Constables Association, which I'm going to attend. There may be some stuff through the town that I, I may attend. Okay. Um, I'm not asked. I'm not asking for a huge training budget. Um, if the state changes things, maybe. <coughs> but at this point, uh, there's, I don't see a huge cost. I mean, I've, I've, I've done everything that I have to that's mandated by the state. I'm current. Uh, I may have to do some stuff with my hours. I usually do online, uh, for the most part, through Police One. And I know that got a little confusing with us. Yeah, it got more because we shared between three towns. Yeah, and, yeah. that's not an issue. You know, so if, if it was, comes to that, I'll come back. If it comes to a training issue, I'll come back to the board and ask for a, a, a training budget. I don't think any training is really itemized. There was, I can't remember. I thought there was a. I think there's some money in the budget. Yeah, it was like five hundred. Yeah, I think there's some in there. Yeah, it, it was just it became very convoluted to figure out. Yeah. So Mark basically. was trying to like work it out through three towns. Through yes. like, he'd take the cruiser this time, and they one guy would pay for the hotel, one town would pay for the training, and it was just really a, a mess. It was always trying to hard. It was hard to figure out. It was hard to figure out what he was doing. Well, mm -hmm. If we were really holding our piece or too much. Or I mean, there's certain classes that I'm mandated. Okay. Take go if a feeling is not going to cover, I'll go to get a hundred dollars for training. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if, if, respectfully, if, if I have, if I go to the range, if, you know, the cost of ammo is not that cheap either. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, right now, I think it's fine. If I need something, I'll address it with Greg. Yeah. With Greg, okay. if I need anything more over, over and above the, the five hundred in my budget, again, well, I'll, I'll stock it over with Greg. But primarily speaking. Uh, I can't. I can't tell you right now. But you don't see any huge expense. I don't see any huge expense because you don't have to send me to the Park Town Academy. You don't have to send me to DUI. You don't have to send me to the domestic violence. Um, I mean, a lot of the core stuff is all done. Okay. My, like I was telling you, yeah, every year, there's, every two years, you got to do domestic violence. Every year, you got to do first aid and CPR. I'm trying to hook up with the. With the uh, oh, speaking of which, I'm trying to hook up with White River Rescue to do their EMT course. I may come to the town and ask you to do that if I can do that. Because I have an EMT in town. I'm, I'm currently a first responder at, at my core level of first aid CPR, but I can't see the town not, if I have the ability to become an EMT, being an EMT within while I'm on duty, being accessible to the town as an EMT. That's something I may address later with you as well. And I'll go through Greg to do that. So that Okay. Good. Well, we appreciate you coming in. And, yeah. We appreciate your work. <laughs> Thank you. Like I said, if you ever need to reach me, my what contact number is on the We should find out about the cheap. Oh, speaking of which, that eyesore out there? Mm. <laughs> it's probably gone by tomorrow. I've got arranged to be towed out of here. So, okay. Oh, it's been there for. It's been a while. I don't want to say a year, but it's been there for a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Since yeah. the beginning of the year. Yeah. Stuff like that, call me. Let me know. Yeah, they'll call me. They'll call me and I'll let you know. Call him? Yeah. Let me know. Call me and I'll let you know. <laughs> well, I've had an occasion where I called the state police and a certain member of the select board would have been authorized to have told an idea too. Yeah. Yeah, the probably the tags just expired. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, oh, that expired in April of this year. Dean's gonna come get it, and they'll they'll deal with getting recouping their funds yeah. from the hotel. So. Yeah. That's good. Okay. okay. We're good to go. All right. So the uh, the next uh, agenda was to. Um, was to go over the, the hill account for the water and sewer. Um, so we'll continue the uh, discussion from last time. Um, the, um, the owners had brought to the to the board's attention of uh, some discrepancy in some billings. Um, so at this time, I would entertain a motion on this. I would move to credit their account $1,805.37, as well as waive the interest fees accrued on their account during our deliberation period. 
Okay. Aye. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Select board meeting minutes for the 14th. Watch it, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You were going to make it right through and then you. Is that a challenge? <laughs> 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 that a challenge? Yeah. I said, I reread it, but I was like, oh, Paul, I can make sure I cross all my teeth. Very good. Very good job. No. No, it was probably. Oh, wait, nope. you guys got to stand up. Oh, the stage got one. Oh. She picked on the wrong guy. The gentleman's name is Ken Carter, not Kent. Oh, okay. I thought that's what he was saying. And he did the signing on the sheet. So I was like, what is that? The real name is Kenneth. Oh, Ken. All right, thank you. So Ken, not Kent. <laughs> all right, perfect. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll can't have it all. That's right. <laughs> so that's I would fine. entertain a motion to approve the. So moved. Meeting minutes uh, as, amended. as amended on the 14th. Second. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. And we have the Cowdery letter. And the cards to. So it sounds like um, currently we have the Cowdery. Um, Trust yeah. that every year um, that we well, that's a month or two ago that we just signed up on that. Enough interest to do yeah, but uh, yeah. in the last, I don't know what it was, six years probably. Anyways, that it hasn't it hasn't accrued enough interest to do anything with you know any type of maintenance or above and beyond. Um, we had received a letter from Jack Calgary. In regards to some some issues or improvements that are um, are required <coughs> on the properties there, and I guess at this point, from what I'm reading, they want to see if they could use some of the money in the trust to make said repairs. I don't believe we can if the trust says that it's just the interest. Yeah. So you don't have the authority to do it. Uh, so that uh, when I read through, I was. You know, there's nothing that we can do now. There's, you know, yeah. since the flooding, there's some significant problems with that, that monument. But I don't think that there's any language in there that says that, that you have any authority to, to pull that money from it. Anyway. Can no. Jack do something? I don't believe so. I mean, they, they would have to do something on their end. The yeah, family. that's what I mean, through the family, through I mean, the witness. I don't know. Have to call, I need to talk to Mr. Ketchum on this, honestly. Yeah. And see if there's any way. It doesn't wait to I mean, I think it would be great if they could do that, but I don't think we have any power. How much would it take to uh, yeah. put the grass back? It's, it's more than that. The road is actually higher now. Than the, up there. the road is higher now than it's ever been. And so this thing here drops way down. Not way down, but it drops down. It used to go from the road up. Yeah, it's down a little bit now. It's, it's, it's in a bad spot. Um, but I don't really know what you can do with it. You know the reasoning why that monument's there? That's where Jack Cabbage's mother grew up. Right. And, and well, we maintain it because. Right. But they how you put that up. Yeah. The There's a spring there, right? Pardon? There's a spring there because people yeah. take water on it all the time. Right. I, I don't. I don't know what we can do to it. I really don't. I, don't. I mean, we don't have land to pay. We don't pay for free. We don't get any funds from that trust. Is it just? Gravel up there now, or? It's coming, yeah. It's just it, all the gravel came around the bend and took it because it's right around the corner. Okay. So when the storm came down and took all the gravel, it pretty much deposited it right there inside that. People are still taking water from it, though. It's still working, it's just not as pretty as it could be. Can we spool it up a little bit? Yeah, he thinks it needs to be raised up and all this other stuff. And I just okay. don't know if that's really feasible. Not really much, no money involved, just a little bit. <laughs> oh, yeah, we'll clean it up, we'll maintain it. We do anything. Yeah. But he wants more. He wants it built up and get up to where the road levels at and everything. And I just don't know that that's really what we need to do, or even possible. Possibly, I don't know. That's there were no stipulations in that. We just have to maintain it, right? We don't even have to maintain it. It doesn't make it only money. only if it makes it past the, the right. Oh, we've been doing it anyway because it's yeah. the right thing to do. I mean, the, the 
according to the note, we really don't need to do anything unless the interest right. is Seems over or whatever. So you might need to reach out to Mr. Ketchum and just see what he thinks what about it. Yeah. I, what I'm trying to get at is it, it doesn't signify that we've got to, we've got to uh, say it out of Washdale because we'd have to replace it, right? There's nothing in I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just that we maintain it. All it says in there is that we have to, the town is required to maintain it and use the money the that the interest if it draws on a certain amount of eventually. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll talk to Mr. Ketchum and see what he Nothing's come out of there. Can we give you a breakdown? Yeah. Yes. yes. The problem is, is with the interest levels being so low, nothing's come out of that yeah, fund no, in six or eight years. Yeah, so. and all that stuff. Like that, so. Yeah. I think there's some uh, actual care for, for their appraisal. I, I would say it would have to be something on their end if they can make a, I don't know if there's a, I mean, he must be the someone's executive. in charge of the trust, you know, for the point of the other. I don't think, yeah. <laughs> well, the trust is pretty much doubled in size, but yeah, you can't take anything out of it based on the wording of the interest. Right. right. I don't know if Jack will use that or not. So. Maybe just bring that up to him. <laughs> Do, do they get a balance of the trust every year? I don't have any idea. I'd have to talk because the you know the trustee of public funds is going to that, so I don't know. All right. I'll reach out to him. See we'll follow up with him on that. Yep. Objections? Anybody have anything big they wanted to bring up through there? The only thing I just wanted to point out is that projected wise we are projected to come about three hundred and three thousand dollars short on the revenue collection end of things on time anyways um for the property tax. for property taxes <coughs> in our budget um, we i mean even though we had um a, a really hard winter uh, with overspending for materials and, and then you know, diesel fuel and repairs to vehicles and all the other stuff that came with it. Uh, right now, our right now our projected deficit um, would be at one hundred and thirty-three thousand. Um, now we just have to take that into consideration that the deficit right now would be. Uh, or we've spent 133,000 more than than our budget, but we also got to look at in this number that we're projecting. Um, there's 303,000 dollars worth of revenues that have not come in, right. that we're not counting here. So <coughs> if if those revenues came in on time, then there is no deficit. You know, you have a surplus. So uh, so currently, I like the way you think. Yeah. So currently, well, I want to make sure that we get that out to the public because um, because we're looking at that our, our cost overran by 133,000. Now we still have unappropriated funds, so like capital funds and things like that that have not been appropriated that we can hold on to, and if, um, that's a tune of about 99 thousand dollars. So we can hold on to those to get as close to even as we can get. So if we if we hold on to those funds, then our deficit is is thirty four thousand dollars. However, if everybody paid their bills on time, there wouldn't be no deficit. We would, you know, at at you know, right now we would be at um, you know we would be able to pay or put all our money into our capital funds that are supposed to be there, and still be. You know, hundred hundred and seventy thousand dollars ahead. You know, and these are the things that you know, one hundred and seventy thousand on what is eight cents really? So I mean, there's there's eight cents worth of tax money every year. That's to, well, at least not every year, but this year that's bound up from people just not paying their bills on time. Yeah. And so again, that's a projection that <clears throat> I looked at the other each quarter to see what the percentage collection rate was like right after taxes because. That's how you calculate what you pay the school. You only have to pay the school within, you know, X amount of days from the day you collect the percentage which you collect. So it was about 93%. So that was kind of how I came into that number. But we did just mail out delinquent tax bills 
<clears throat> on Wednesday. So um, you do see an influx right away of money from you know people that maybe just forgot to pay, right. um, or you know. So you do see some influx, and we, and we paid the school everything because it just doesn't make sense the way it's doing it. You know, they just pay. You got to pay them. And they, the school gets paid regardless of whether you collect all the money or not. They get hundred percent. So <clears throat> anyway, so hopefully <clears throat> at the end of you know May, when we do the projections again here, we will get a nice little influx of cash out of those bills that ninety, you know, three percent that you know, might be higher. So hopefully that will take care of it. Because uh, the other thing is you haven't set the tax rate yet. You'll set the tax rate in June. By then you'll have a better idea. So if you have to do any deficit reduction, you'll make it up in that tax rate. Mm -hmm. That way you're not sitting on it for. Right. Hundred years and then you have a one point four million dollar response. So I mean and, and the thing really to get out there is if magically tomorrow or before mm -hmm. July first everybody came in and paid their money, we would have we would, you know, be able to have money in our undesignated balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and people are you know, <coughs> farm heads are doing well, they know that they're I did you guys, do, I have to give an Oscar that speech yet. You're broke all the time. I did do, um, <laughs> Don't spend it. Now, no. just to put it in perspective, um, because at some point, some of our budgeting, we, we budget for delinquent taxes, right? And at some point, very soon, we're not going to budget for delinquent taxes, right? So there's going to be, you know, like this year, we budgeted $50,000 of revenue to be collected, right? And next year, we already cut that. And penalties and interest and things like that come along with it. So if you take that out of it, and I was just kind of doing a comparison. Everybody, based on the uh, you know the cost overrun of a really severe winter of 133,000, if if everybody did pay their bill on time um, this year, and if you take out all the uh, <coughs> if you take out all the delinquent taxes and penalties and interest that we collected over this year. Our true disc, we would have run a deficit this year. I don't think anybody would have said we wouldn't have, but we would have run a deficit, but it would have only been to the tune of thirty-seven thousand dollars overall. Um, now the good thing is that we had, you know, lots of delinquent taxes and penalties and interest that we collected too. Um, so it should have been really a good surplus year for us. Everybody, you know, we should have been able to keep, you know. Two hundred thousand dollars in our pocket, but instead, you know, we're running a slight deficit because we're still lacking payment, um, and that's kind of what I want to get out there yeah. earlier with the water and sewer. Is the same thing. If everybody showed up and paid the water and sewer bills, we'd be able to do the the upgrades to the water and sewer systems on time and not right. have to be you know, behind time. So, yeah. well, it's um, just that unfortunate can get thick. Just about far down. So I, a couple of notes I had on here was um, so we still have uh, well our repairs, parts, and tires on equipment. You know we're we're over on that budget currently. Mm -hmm. Our projected over just forty five thousand, and then did that forty five that forty five thousand included the ten. Yep. You, you said you have 10 more coming in. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a guess. Yeah, okay. Okay. Four hours. So that covered that. Yeah. And I know we've been extremely busy, but kind of looking, <laughs> going back through the material that we used this year, can we get, can we get the, uh, the discussion for the winter disbursement of material? Winter maintenance schedule or something. Can we get that back on the yeah. agenda items that are talked sure. about? I know it'd be nice to have that formalized and done this summer, so we can give everybody the opportunity to get ready. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just kind of looking at the salt overage and I said, I don't get that on there. Um, I didn't see anything else. Did anybody have anything that stuck out or wanted any more clarification on? I tried to put notes in if I. Well, we have to keep revisiting it, then it's something I can forget. The blood-borne pathogen 
Yeah, this is just a clarification email that we got from our, our passive people about that waiver form. Um, basically what he said is that Workman's Comp will cover all of this um, and that the form is, it is it's just it is what it is. We can't be overwhelmed to the language of the form. We have to keep it. Okay. So you are not yeah, we're, 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 we're on the hook no matter what. Workman's Comp will cover. We'll cover. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Not Workman's Comp will cover. Bye -bye. And last time we made a motion accepting it as it was, unless it needed to be amended. Right, so you can do nothing else. Yeah. Of course, you know how we have, it is nowadays. Even if you have all your eyes dotted and T's crossed, someone can still sue you for whatever, right? So, does anybody have any further discussion on that matter? Yeah, delinquent tax report. Everybody received that. <laughs> Big concerns, Therese?
So, uh, but otherwise, I think it's, uh, you know, it's manageable. It's, yeah. I, I'm happy. I mean, it's, it's come a long ways. I, mean, I, would have, I was unhappy after the tax sale that I didn't sell two properties, but we got it from a quarter of a million down to two, so that wasn't bad. But we'll do another one in the fall, and hopefully it make sure we hit them all. Because we had a lot of interest in that tax sale. I didn't know it was the season. I had a lot of interest in that tax sale, and we sold it. And then the ones that, didn't, that we sold, we you know we sold all but two, so that was bad. Uh, we're not when we started with such a big list. So. Okay. Any further discussion regards to the one with tax report? Yeah. So while we're talking about the, um, the Chris Jarvis um, <laughs> garbage nuisance That's right. ordinance, uh, deputy. Because my name seems to get Definitely and everything. Officer. Yeah. Um, just checking on to see where the um, the Chris Jarvis bump outs are at. Full of bees. I I told I told my friends that we were going to install them on Crystal Drive, but <laughs> <laughs> we need to. <laughs> I don't even remember what we said about those. We what did we say? May fifteenth. We had made any time We had made an adjustment, so yeah. we're going to move. So the one one down to the bank was still going to be there, but we were going to take the one in front of the hardware store and we were going to move that down by the press. So we were like straight, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the. Yeah. That was and, I, and I know we had, you know, we've had floods. Yeah. <laughs> and I think what we were looking at doing was because the one by the hardware store seemed to get run over the most. And if we could put that one up farther. We'll put two to one either side, yeah. And then get some more feedback through that. And yeah. maybe we ought to, because when we initially put these in, we were going to give it a year or two and get some feedback, right? And they've been in, since, well, they've been in for one year. So we've, we've only gotten one year's worth of feedback and damage reports on the people. So I don't know, but. Um, I mean, it, it, I, they will get installed. With the, the, I know that as soon as the guys get caught up and they can get to striping the crosswalks, they'll do it at the same time. They will okay. the same time. I would recommend that we wait till Pike is out of here and the bank has steps. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Bank needs steps? When is Pike going to be out of here? Uh, well, to find out, but. Well, they're not even working in this area. The contract will probably be over. I mean, this area is pretty well. As long as, as soon as we get the stairs done and these guys with the poles, I think, are out of the downtown area. I was so. say, oh, yeah, but Thursday, I was parked by the bank and traffic was way yeah. behind me as far as I could see. Right. And then I started moving, and by the time I got up going home, it was all the way up to Nobles. Right. And that was three and a half minutes. Mm. But what are, what are the bump outs affecting with traffic in terms of that? People just. You have cars in the road. I don't think you want anything out there other than the road until you don't have track backed up all the time. Right, and I, my question is, how is the bump out any different than a car parked along the side of the road in, in relation to moving or stop traffic? I don't, I don't think there's any difference. I mean, that's been our argument this whole time is it's no, it's no, it doesn't make the road any more narrow than a park. Would, you know, so I just don't see the why wait till construction that's just past where we'd be putting them. I mean, the idea of the bump outs is, is to have them installed prior to the tourist season so that we're slowing traffic down the downtown to keep the noise level down. So well, we don't need them then, we're slowing the traffic down now. <laughs> well, but not eventually the end of the day. <laughs> Up and they leave, and then so, people speed up and down this road. Yeah. So, but we just I need to—we just need to kind of know when we're going to put those back in, so that we can coordinate. Like, because you know, we're going to have to get the those downtown are... people interested in, and, and you know, making them look good. And, and you know, those are scheduled usually to, to go in and sing as a strike, which is either the end of May or early June. But, but the bank, I mean, that's going, there's going to be construction right there. Yeah, well, that's, a different, that's yeah. a different story. That's a you won't put the one by the yeah, there's no reason to write that. There's right no now. place to put it. Yeah, and we can't get energy striking and all that anyway. So I'll have to talk to Alan and see what his schedule looks like. But ideally, it would be at the same time as striking because it's all right there. I mean, if the bank says, hey, we got 
three weeks of working on the steps and maybe we do it at the end of June and put sure. it open at the end of June or something, but That's or whatever makes sense. So just just knowing that they're gonna be put in and we should really thoroughly track feedback this year. Um, and that way we can really establish what we want to do with them going forward. And you know again, you know this was not anybody on this, you know, select board's idea, you know, to put these in. This was you know, something that, that came through, an opportunity that came through the BRI that was piggybacked on top of other successful uh, downtown initiatives that, you know, that, well, this came out of the original initiative, which was, you know, limiting the noise decibels in the downtown, so. This kind of quite just right out. Detailed she list did. last year on the Word document, and yeah. I think she provided you guys that information. She kept a very detailed list of complaints. So yeah, we got the, I will talk with it. I will talk with Alan and see what his schedule looks like. And, and yeah. let you know. I mean, I think on my end, I just would rather see the crosswalks painted, you know, as soon as we can. You know, like last year, we got done. But if they're working in the right away, anyway, they're going to do them all the same time. They will always get last year. Yeah. Because if we get any traffic before, we might as well do it all. That's... So, uh, I'm assuming it'll be soon. We try to do it in May, honestly, but with the weather and stuff. Right. Well, well, you got to get a few days of yeah. nice weather, too. And not have to do anything else. So. Never make it run. Yeah. Talking about. Any, any other discussions? 